Hey friends, today we're going to talk about an alto gurdy. What's the difference between that and a tenor and then a regular soprano gurdy? Stick around and find out. I'm George Leverett of Alter Wind Music. Welcome to Hurdy Gurdy World. We're going to start this discussion again with the violin, just like last time. We discussed the violin tuning and we're going to kind of start there as a launching point into an, what an alto gurdy is and how it differs and what makes it what it is, what that, what that word means. Now, again, I reiterate, if you're not familiar with violins or their tunings, that's okay. We'll, we'll kind of explain it as we go. You don't really need to have that as a background. Let's get started. The violin has four strings that are tuned to E, A, D, G. The bottom string is E, then A, then D, then G. On another episode, the one last week, I talked about kind of how that relates to a hurdy-gurdy tuning, which would be more in the soprano range, more, more in the higher registers. Now, when I talk about an alto gurdy, I'm talking more about lower registers or lower tones. This falls more in the range of a viola. The strings of a viola are somewhat similar to a violin, only the bottom string starts on A, next one up is D, next one up is G, and then the top string on a viola is C. I don't actually have a viola here, so I won't be able to pluck that out for you. Just know that it goes a little lower yet. If we compare the strings of a violin and the strings of a viola side by side, you can see that three of the strings have the same tuning. Those ones in the middle there, the A, excuse me, the A, the D, and the G. The violin goes a little higher, the viola goes a little lower. When we're dealing with hurdy-gurdies, the tuning's very similar, except that high a note will usually get dropped down to a G. So I'll demonstrate on the violin. We'll drop that tuning down. There we go. So now we have a G, a D, a G. And then on an alto girdy, you have the low C. Hopefully you can see how it's still kind of similar to the viola, uh, just one note different for the melody strings. And now we'll demonstrate that on a live actual hurdy-gurdy. Here we have that high G melody string. The next will be our D. The next will be our lower G. The next one up from there is the lowest C. So on the simplest level, an alto gurdy falls more in the viola scale range. Now, it may not sound like that big of a difference, one string and one note, but it actually is, and I'll explain how that works in terms of the physics of the instruments. When you look at violins, usually they'll have a shorter vibrating length for the strings, so the instrument will overall be a little smaller to accommodate that. That soprano range, when it comes to hurdy-gurdies, is a good thing because you have an instrument that fits the player pretty comfortably. Um, now, when you get to an alto gurdy, the lower strings need a longer vibrating length. So you can see this one's quite a bit, and that means the whole instrument starts to get longer. Uh, the sound box gets longer, and depending on how many strings you have on there, it gets a little deeper to accommodate a larger wheel size. So now you start to have a lot more of the lower overtones come out. Uh, I'll demonstrate. For instance, uh, I'll pick my low G chanter and a low G drone with a little tuning. One thing about an alto instrument, not only are the melody strings longer, but the drones are a little longer too. So now we're getting longer vibrating links for the strings and we can get down into some lower registers there. So 
that low G would be the lowest drone you would have on a soprano girdy, the gross bordone. But with an alto girdy, usually we can get down a little lower to even E. Or depending on how the instrument's made, even a low C. I'll turn on that low C drone with my low C chanter I talked about a moment ago. You hear how we're hitting some, some pretty uh, low tones there. So it gives you a little taste. An alto girdy kind of dips down into lower overtones in terms of the, the bass frequencies that tend to to be uh, amplified from the body, as well as the actual notes generated from the strings. Some people ask, well, what's the difference between an alto and a tenor hurdy-gurdy? In terms of tuning, they're the same. The melody strings are the same. The difference between an alto and a tenor instrument is a tenor would be longer still. Speaking as a maker of hurdy-gurdies, it's a little bit of a balancing act. Crafting an instrument that really generates the low overtones, but isn't awkward to hold or play. Um, this particular one has a scale length, which for American viola strings would be considered long. For European viola strings, it would be considered a medium scale length. Um, I could extend this another inch or two, but the issue you start to get into the more you extend it, the longer it gets, and it starts to pitch to the side. So instrument balance is a concern. Every maker has their own sensibility, what makes for a comfortable instrument to play. If you, if you get too much longer, when you start to hit those really long links, you have an instrument that is just going to be kind of lopsided to hold, um, in which case, you know, you compensate with the way you cinch your straps up and whatnot. Anyway, there's an insight, tenor versus alto, kind of talking about the same tuning. There's even short scale alto girdies, which are almost the same as a violin scale. Uh, the instrument's much shorter. You still have the tuning of the alto, doesn't generate quite the bass overtones as you would otherwise have. Otherwise have. But then you have an instrument that kind of fits the player a little better. So. There's an overview of how that works. One more quick addition to this topic. So far we've been discussing hurdy-gurdies with four melody strings, but you also find them with three melody strings, in which case they're tuned like the middle notes of our graphic here, G4, D4, and G3. Hopefully that demystifies the topic for you and this was helpful in some way. Thanks for tuning in. I'm George Leverett of Alterwind Music. If you like this video, be sure to hit like or subscribe. If you have questions you would like to see addressed in future episodes, be sure to write those in the comments or shoot me a message. And if you don't like what you're seeing, be sure to hit dislike twice. <laughs>